Today is part two of how not to make a junk journal. Child your hearts, thanks for coming over to the studio today and hanging out with us. My husband Don is behind the camera and my name's Kat, Katarina Giglio. And um, we want to start out right away with gratitude and thank our um, private Facebook group. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we so appreciate your love and your support. And uh, we just want to start, you know, by saying that. And we also want to thank all of our um, all of the wonderful people who have donated to us uh, on our PayPal uh, donation button. You guys rock. Thank you so much. It helps us so immensely. And um, today we're going to get started um, with how not to make a junk journal part two. Okay, so today is part two. And so if you haven't seen part one, you probably want to go back and see part one of how not to make a junk journal. So this is the journal that we made and it's an altered, it's actually an altered book right now. It isn't even quite a journal yet because I haven't really started journaling, but today we're going to start filling it up and journaling and um, working in it. So when last you saw this book, <clears throat> the pages, and I, I'm moving this a little fast, I know, sweetie, but... <clears throat> Wonderful Don behind the camera trying to keep everything together. You're okay. Okay. So all the pages have been gessoed. Uh, they've either got clear gesso uh, or white gesso or black gesso. I did a lot of gessoing, but I wanted to make sure that all the wrapping papers would welcome the um, mixed media that we're going to pile on here. And because the pages are kind of thin, you know, I wanted to give them an extra coat. And <clears throat> so here's a little tip if you are working in a journal and you do have some, some thin or flimsy pages, go ahead and give them several coats. Um, it will really help um, and it will, it will keep the, the pages from getting so flimsy and then too heavy and flopping and bending and all of that stuff that you don't want to happen in your journal. <laughs> so they're all done, they're all finished. And now I'm going to show you the front. So um, one of the reasons we chose this journal was this image. And um, our private Facebook group picked this book. And we just loved this gown and thought she was just so beautiful. Um, and as I was working on the book, alas, I rubbed her face off. And so I went back and I put clear gesso over the image because we want to keep the image intact. This, not so much. I don't really care about that. Um, one of the reasons that we call it an altered book is that through changing it, which is what altered means, <clears throat> we're going to change the book either in its entirety or um, its appearance, or it, we can change the intention, the original intention of the book. And we've done all of those things because it's all going to be about the girl, it's going to be about beauty, it's going to be about yumminess. So inside the book we put that paper that we talked about. <clears throat> so this is the opening. And I L-O-V-E love this paper. And what was it that Amanda said I should say? Yum yum pig's bum. So yum yum pig's bum. Amanda, I absolutely L-O-V-E love this paper. It's absolutely gorgeous. I got it in Italy. My one sadness is I didn't buy more. Always now from now on I buy as many as I think I want. So there you go. You open it up and we have another page here. And I put some <clears throat> tape here. And, um, and then you know how I love, L-O-V-E, love parchment papers uh, as a front. So we did that. And then I found this book page that I thought was gorgeous. And so I decided to use it and to kind of concentrate on the Georgian look because I, I adore Jane Austen. I've read all of her books. I've read them over and over again. I'm rereading Mansfield Park right now. So I love that. And so I, this was just a plain black and white kind of gray picture. And so I used gelatos on her, which I told you gelatos might come out. And then this is um, paper, just a, 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 a wrapping paper. This is an old paper bag. Um, this is shred, you know how I love shred. And then bits um, as if 
we had taken the scraps from her dress and just put them together. This piece is actually an antique price tag for a cardboard uh, piece of lace. So you know how they used to wrap the lace around the cardboards and then they would put these little tags to tell you the price. And I just, I think it's just swoon worthy. So we're going to- Sorry, could you say that again? <sighs> I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> Sorry about that. My Apple Watch got in the way. She thought I was talking to her, not you. <laughs> so anyway, this is a page from a book. So the back looks like this. I started using a little bit of gelatos on it. I haven't finished it. I haven't done any of the other pages because I'm going to show you how to put this, the cover page, the um, end pages in right now. I have my paper cut to size, a little bit extra because we're just going to sand off the edges. And then I have a piece of cardstock um, that I gessoed with black and um, I gessoed with clear on this side. So um, the black side, of course, is going to go into the book like this, just like this one did. And it's going to be glued down to this page. And then we have a, um, I've got a piece of fabric that I'm going to place here to glue this in and then to glue this to this page, if that makes sense to you. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process. So hang on and we're gonna get started right away. I'm gonna use PVA to glue it down so that we cover up this, this work here and uh, we make a beautiful presentation with this yummy paper. And um, I wanna make sure that I get, uh, actually, you know what, we're gonna do the hinge first. Yeah, we're gonna do the hinge first. Let me put this here <clears throat> and glue the hinge in. And then this is going to go on the back of this. So here's the fabric and I just use the same muslin that I used for this. Actually, I think it's a tea towel, but it's basically a muslin or a cotton. And it was a fairly decent weight uh, because this book is so big. I mean, if you're using a small book, you won't have to worry about it. But anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. And then this is gonna be glued down into the book. We're gonna do that right now. So I'm just using PVA and a dry brush. I want it to be as close to the edge as possible, although I am going to use some decorative tape on it too. But, so we're going to glue that in here. I'm using my fingers to push it into the edge here and then fold this back because that's where that page is going to go. So, <clears throat> And you always want to use a dry brush. I know I've told you that before, but especially when you're working with fabrics and things like that. And mixing things when you're mixing, yes. Okay, so this is going to go here. And I'm not worried about there being anything left over. I can go back and touch this up. That's not a problem at all. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and remember my friend Sarah says, Sarah Fishburn says, mistakes are opportunities for embellishment. So, you know, think about that when you make a mistake next time. Um, okay, so we're just gonna lay this down like this. Okay, and our decorative tape is gonna go right there. We wanna pull this up just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. Now, if you weren't here, I'd probably wait for this to dry. But since you're here, we're gonna go ahead and put this in. <clears throat> and one of the things I like to do is do one side first and then the other. Don't glue the whole thing and then try to put it on. That's, that's a huge mistake, so. <clears throat> 
what I wanted to express to you, <clears throat> excuse me, is that um, whatever, no matter what the materials are that you're creating with, um, <clears throat> A journal can't be junk. Once you've created it, it's a piece of art. And that's the only thing that I'm trying to say by this is that junk and art are not synonymous with each other. Uh, to me, junk means worthless. And the elevation of discarded materials into a journal or a book or a piece of work is art. And that's, that's what I'm trying to say about it. So thank you so much for all of your kind comments about it. I really appreciated that. And I know so many of you believe the same thing that I do. Art is this wonderful alchemical process where you create something from nothing. So we have this glued in. And now I'm just going to use my um, sanding sponge and I'm going to take the edge off all the way around. I know you don't want to watch this whole thing, so <laughs> we'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so this is all in place, and I just used my my sanding sponge to, uh, to finish it off, and I'll take care of some of the rest of it later because I know you want to move on, and I know you've seen me make the uh, the parchment page <clears throat> many, many times. If you haven't, go back and look at all my other videos, and you'll see it. Um, so now we're going to work on the cover because I do have an idea for the cover. I want to. Um, create there's a piece that I want to put right here so and I have our little process to share with you because I thought it would be fun to use uh, a gold leaf it isn't actually a real gold leaf it is probably brass but it's really fun so we're gonna do that right away I found this little piece in my stash and it says ladies hand don't ask me what that's all about, I have no idea. I found it like this. I would assume that there was something hanging from these little rings, <laughs> these little tiny things hanging here. And it may have had like, uh, oh, uh, ribbon roses and things like that. It may have been some kind of prize, um, I don't know. But I just thought it would be perfect for our book, Lady's Hand, to call it that. And so I just took a plain piece of cotty and I gessoed it with black gesso and then I used the gold leaf on it. And I thought that that would really show up well because this is so tarnished and it looks, looks very cool, I think, together. Um, and I'm not really sure what else we're going to do. I was thinking I wanted to add this. I don't want to cover up the dress, but I just love this. Um, kind of worn and lovely and then this insouciance with this piece here um, which don't ask me where that came from but there was something glued to it and I thought it would be very cool so let me show you how I made this I am I have a little piece of cotty paper and I am going to paint just a little bit of black gesso now so you paint the piece that you want and you can't use it wet. If you do, it just doesn't really work quite as well. You want it to be tacky. And we have some sheets, some gold sheets, on our Amazon links. Now these used to be sheets, but they're, these, this is what's left over. And they're really, really yummy. And so I'm gonna share with you how to do this. And I'm using a really super old brush too, that's something that could just go into the trash pile as you see. And so you want it to be tacky, you don't want it to be too wet, um, you, you want it to have just be light, you know, just paint the, uh, with a dry brush, take your black gesso, paint it lightly, and then lay, lay down your gold leafing. Now that Da Vinci, which is the 
the, the product name of the gold leaf that we recommend that's in our Amazon links. And thank you very much for purchasing things on our Amazon links. We really appreciate you um, helping us out like that. Um, da Vinci also makes um, a, a glue, an adhesive for this. But what I wanted to share with you is that artists have been applying with this with gesso forever. Um, and as I said, this isn't real gold, it's probably just brass, but it looks like gold and it's really fun to play with and to use in your artwork. And so you just lay it down like this and you just keep laying it down until you get the whole thing covered. Then once you get the whole thing covered and it's dry, then you can go back with a brush and you can rub it back and then burnish it. Now I, I did it too soon and that's why the black came through. But that's that's how simple and easy it really is. So, um, so give it a try, see what you think. It's really fun to use and I just love the way it looks on this. Now I'm applying gel matte medium and I'm going to glue this little bit to it and we're going to stick this down. If it was any heavier, I'd probably use E6000 or something like that, a commercial glue, but I think this will be absolutely fine. And then um, I think this is gonna go here, but you know, I think it needs some kind of lace or some other kind of trim too. So I'm gonna think about that, but right now we'll get this down and I think I like this side better than this side. I think this side is just too raw for me. So I'm just going to put glue on here. And I like things that kind of straddle the masculine and feminine look. I don't like things to be too pretty and I don't think, like things to be too masculine. I, I like things to kind of, kind of be in the middle. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know how to say that in a better way, but kind of, uh, balanced. ah, there you go. That your favorite word, right? He loves balanced. Okay. We'll set this like this. Okay. Now we'll turn it over. There we are. And we've got this one. put this down and then I'm not really sure but I think it needs something else so we'll figure that out okay now you have to stay there I just thought ladies hand was like a perfect title for this especially if we're going to have little bits of lace and fabrics with our images um, because garments were made completely by hand, always. You know, it was never, it, it, they, were, they weren't machine manufactured in those days. So I just think it's just a, a lovely, um, lovely title for the book. I have lots of images to use today and to play with. And <clears throat> I found this old wrapping paper. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, it's just scraps at an estate sale. And uh, I thought it would be really fun to use in this book. I've had this stashed away and thinking that there might come a day when I wanted to do a book about women and beauty. Um, and so here it is, that day has come. And so I actually wrote to Frederica Cards. I think that's it, Frederica, yeah, in England. And um, asked them for permission to use their wrapping papers in our books and they were super happy about that. And so you can, um, Don's gonna put the link on, or the, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, the location on this, on our, you know. Anyway, you'll find it, it'll be on there, you'll be able to see it. And um, so you can- In the description. In the description below, that's right. And so you can um, order, wrapping papers from them. They have all kinds of fabulous, yummy wrapping papers. Um, what was that Amanda said? Yum yum pig's bum. Um, they have cups and saucers, all kinds of really fun things. Um, and this one is out of stock currently, but they're getting it back in stock. So yay on that. And they have others that are similar to this. 
and so I think that you're going to find just wonderful things there. Um, and so anyway, if, when you go and you buy all your papers, please tell them that I sent you because I just think they're just, they're just gorgeous. So found this, been saving it and thought I would do a little fussy tear and, um, take her out of there because I just really like her. We are not sponsored by them. We get, no we get nothing from them. Nobody owns us. We don't work for Golden. We don't work for anybody but ourselves. So there you have it. Uh, this station, or this, no, it's a channel, right? This channel is brought to you by you. I like saying that because it's absolutely true. So we thank you for your support. Okay, now she's got to have something uh, behind her because that's just too boring. Um, she looks kind of good there, but um, I kind of don't want to start right in the beginning. Mm. She might be good on the map. No, too busy. Okay, no, that's boring. Mm. Ooh, I like her here. She looks great there. Okay, so now we have to decide what else we're going to put with her. I'm going to get in front of the camera lens right away. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> this is awkward to do it like this. Um, <laughs> trying to film over my shoulder and uh, so and get everything done. So I have one of these images down and um, this page is actually upside down which I love, love because you can't tell what it is, you can't read it and that's the whole point about not being able to read it. And I was thinking that I would love to put this behind here. Now one of the things that you have to pay attention to when you're working in a journal um, is or working in illustrating something in a journal is that you want to remember that you have to think about scale and so um, you don't want everything to be little tiny <clears throat> you know little tiny heads little tiny pieces a little bit of that goes a long way but you you want things to kind of jump out you want to have a, a, a focal point and something to really kind of jump out at you too so you know, I just love this paper and with the gold on it I thought it was gorgeous and we just need a little you know piece of it um, because it's going to be hidden underneath her we're going to glue that down but um, <clears throat> I really like the drama <clears throat> of that sorry I have this like little allergy thing going on I got my Moderna shot uh, um, what do you call that a booster <clears throat> on Monday and so I've just kind of been juggling things since then so anyway I like the way this looks now <clears throat> this is from an old napkin and part of part of what this whole video is about is that artists have been using things that are discarded forever and if you ever go and look at um, at any artist journals you're going to see all kinds of things that would have been discarded. I mean, I've seen things like gum wrappers and tickets and things like that. I mean, Cornell, you know, Joseph Cornell, he used all kinds of things that were discarded in his work. <clears throat> it's just the nature of being an artist is that you see beyond um, what it is. You don't think of it as junk. You think of it as a useful thing in your creation, in your art, in your work. And so, um, and so, you know, we use all kinds of things to create with. And then that alchemical process takes over and says, oh, this would be great together. Wouldn't this be beautiful in here? Wouldn't this go great over there? And you just allow that flow to happen in your work and it becomes art. It's, it's no longer something that was discarded. So that's how it works for me and I know it works like that for many of you as well. And, and what I'll end up doing is going over it with a clear gesso to kind of marry everything. I've got quite a bit of gel matte medium on here and I'm going to use um, a, uh, a sheet of wax paper to cover this so we can keep working. Okay, I know I'm going to put something down here and probably some kind of fabrics or lace pieces, something like that, that's going to fit at the bottom. Um, and I'm just going to put the wax paper over it so we can go on to work. I have a video in the near future on themed journals, working on my 
uh, flower journal, my passport journal, and then this journal. And I'm going to show how I'm going to put new pages in here. So I've got a, a really, I think, a cool way to add more pages to um, to incorporate in this because we're just going to keep working on um, on women and beauty and you know just really wonderful things. Um, so. On to the next page. When I work in my journals, I work really quickly and I just uh, listen to my intuition and uh, place things that I just feel like something wants to live there and I don't really second guess it. If I come back later and I don't like it, I just rip it up. I tear it up, I get rid of it, I, um, <clears throat> I gesso over it, I change it, I just, uh, but, what I found is that as I'm working, if I'm not listening to my intuition and I'm trying to figure out how it's supposed to look, um, then I'm just really struggling. I just love this little shred that says Mona Me and I thought this would be lovely here. And so I thought I would put it in the bird's beak. Um, so we're just going to do that here and get it down if I can get it correctly. And there we go. And just play with it. Now, I don't know what else is going to happen on these pages, but this just feels right to me right here, right now. And that's really all that's important, right? Is just being in the moment and working through it as you go. So I'm at the beginning of the book now. We're starting another spread and I have this old, old book page with list of illustrations and I thought I would go ahead and use this um, on here and smooth that down. And then I just, lo I just love the border and I thought it would be perfect for this little sunny bonnet. And, um, and I'm gonna tear it a little bit more. And, you know, um, so this is an altered book, and um, I know I talked a little bit about that, but, um, but now that I'm starting to get a few more things into this, now it's starting to become an art journal. Now, I'm going to be doing some writing in here and have some thoughts about women, beauty, um, and some of the... Um, so, yeah, I thought that would be great here, right about there. Um, and some of our ideas about that and about some of the, the baggage that as women we carry with us. Um, so it isn't going to be just about beauty, but it's also going to be about our perception about beauty and how we think we should look and maybe we don't look. Um, so there's going to be that going on in here too. So this is going to be a work in progress. So I'm, I'm excited about doing um, a theme journal post and um, sharing that with you. And so um, I was thinking that she might have worn this in a bit of her dress. And so we're just going to put that there right now. And Trying to stay out of your picture frame up there. Am I good. We're doing good? Okay, great. Thank you. And stay. You have to stay. Okay, love that. All right, one more. I think we're going to do something about the widow. Widow's weeds coming up next. Um, I have an old uh, costume book and I just love this um, widow um, image here and um, and I thought she would be perfect in here and um, and this is just an old piece of apparently scrapbooking paper and um, so I'm going to use that and juxtapose it and then this old old ribbon that is almost pretty much rotting and I just ripped that and I just love the way that turned out and so putting it all together um, we've all experienced loss, and so this this page um, will um, express that and and express um, the ritual around loss and the clothing that that we wore. <clears throat> All 
Okay, so I like that. And I think we're going to use this somehow here. And I've got this ribbon. This is kind of hard to do with gloves on, but I think this is going to be incorporated here somehow. And then some other piece. I'm not really sure. And then I have this piece too that I do want to use on another piece. I'm not sure where I want to put this, but yeah, that's too much to go there. But anyway, so one of the things that you want to do is pay attention to scale and use things that are large and small and put them all together and listen to your intuition. Well, we're at Chow for now, and um, I enjoyed working on my journal with you today. And we look forward to another video where we're working on themed journals together, and we're going to revisit how not to make a junk journal. Um, all of our journals are fabulous pieces of art and creation. And so um, until next time, until we see you, uh, we send you all of our love. So Chow for now.